Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey everybody, how are you? It's Alex Bennett, it is the Ramble, and of course, as you know, we go on until, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Forever. Uh, uh, midnight Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, alrighty? Okay, and let me just uh, turn up my uh, microphone up just a little bit. Uh, what, what, are you, what, are you, what are you doing there? What is that? Chapstick, it's Blistex. Huh? Blistex. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Drivers. What were you running out of the room for? Because I usually keep a one here, and it wasn't here. Oh, I see. So you didn't have your bliss text. Yeah. I see. Okay. Anyway, that's uh, that's that's her. Yeah. It's Friday. It's Friday. But I took a day off. It was so nice. Because you had to go to the doctor. I had a doctor's appointment. My annual. Mm-hmm. Your manual? My manual. Your, I manual. Ha, isn't it cute? I had mine earlier this week. I know, I know, I know. And I know. it came out terrible. <laughs> what do you mean it came out terrible? It, Here we go. We're going to hear the whole report. No, it came out bad. Yeah. Oh, Alex, yeah. it's just stop it. Actually, all my all my heart stuff, all the cholesterol and everything is perfect. <sighs> it's great. Help me. It was the prostate Please number. Please call in early tonight. It was bad. This is really good. It wasn't good. Please, I need your help. Actually, according to the urologist, it wasn't bad, but I think of it that way. He still has about uh, another six months. No, I, 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 you have no, no pity for me. Why should I? When I don't know what's real and what's not real. Huh? I'd feel sorry for your pussy if you were having pussy problems. So I should feel sorry for your dick? You, you should feel sorry for my prostate, my poor little prostate. Poor little prostate. Let me see the little prostate. He doesn't think I have cancer yet. But, but I do. But I. But it went up. <laughs> it went up a decent, a, a good oh, amount. Oh God! Please call in uh, tonight, it, it, everybody. No, they're going to call in and then well, they're going to talk with me about my prostate. And I'll be asleep by yeah. then. It's going to be a good show tonight. Folks. And I'm going to sleep early. I don't want to hear this, the ailments. You don't care. I do care, but no, it's care. every minute, you don't nonstop. Care. You, don't you like care. Trump. You're like Trump in, well, in, like in the Trump? medical. It, yeah. I'll tell you, I had a problem today. Which one? Uh, this is the one we can discuss and you won't be mad at it. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm, I, I'm talking with the doctor. No, we're back to medical. And I said, uh, how, how's, biz, how's your business being affected by the current state of politics and whatever? And he said, well, I voted for Trump. I'm a Trump guy. He said that? Yeah. Well, how, how, how do you like him now? Well, I, <laughs> I, I happen to like him. No, no, no. How, I, how I, the, the doctor liked Trump now? I didn't ask him. Oh. I didn't, uh, uh, what I told him was I said I got new insurance. I got, got sa insurance from SAG and then he, uh, the Screen Actors Guild. And then he said, uh, and then we got into the thing about Trump, and he said, but, uh, of course, you're with the Screen Actors Guild, and they hate Trump. <laughs> no shit. You know, and I just didn't want to get into it with him because, you know, this man is holding his prostate mic in his hands. <laughs> holding your prostate. Yeah, and I, I just said to him, I said, you know, I didn't I didn't say anything about it. And it, but I, I had that last night we were talking about it last night. If you if you met up with the because we have basically nothing but guys call in the program. Said if you uh, if you met up with a woman and uh, she was a you know slam dunk to get you were a slam, was a slam dunk to get laid and you found out she voted for Trump, what would you do? He said that. No, I said. Oh, you to, said it. I said to the to the to the, doctor. to the panel. Oh, the panel. Pay attention. Well, I didn't hear your show last night. No, well, I was just explaining it to you, but oh, you yeah. were off in La La Land somewhere well, and couldn't I'm, hear me. Uh, don't yell. So anyway, no. So I. So I. And then today, I had this conundrum. Like he's my doctor, and he I happens to be. I I've had a hard time finding a urologist I liked, and this guy, you know, as much as I fear all urologists, when I'm with him, I feel good. 
Okay, I don't feel fear. Does he use his finger or that machine that the oh, other one Oh, he doesn't use his finger. He hate, I think he hates putting fingers up people's asses. He puts a, a he gave me a sonogram of my... But that's the other one that did that too, didn't he? No. The no. other one that you liked that didn't take, that didn't take uh, credit cards. This is the guy I'm talking oh, about. Oh, you were talking about changing. That no, oh, no, okay. no. This is the urologist I have now. I've been through... And he uses, Three or four urologists. And he uses to, that little he, thing. Well, he uses the sonogram. No finger for him. Yeah, he shoves this tool up my ass, and he can really see the, the prostate. So he he, uh, he knows really whether he sees anything. He says, I don't see anything there. You know, I'll tell the audience later what he saw. Please. Uh, but Spare me. I should have had him send me the picture of it so I could. It's by 10, the way, 10. he showed me the cyst in my kidneys. Oh, yeah? Today. Yeah, he took a sonogram. He did my renal today. I have a cyst in, in my, a big cyst in one of my kidneys. The other one, I have a tiny Is that the cyst. one where the stone was? No. Well, I mean, the stone was somewhere there. But but in that same kidney? Yeah. But he said, his cysts are nothing but fluid sacs. And he said, this is a big fatty one, and it probably won't even, it wouldn't even burst. But if but it, they could But if it, it burst, they no, it, no, no, they don't. They just he said, it. if it burst, you wouldn't have any problems. He says, just pure body liquid you know so uh, us he said otherwise your renal system looks great your bladder looks Here terrific you know i said i was beginning to think like i was in a beauty contest do i have a beautiful bladder or do i have a beautiful <laughs> is that a bladder and you're gonna live till tomorrow at and least. i said and it's also half full because he didn't ask for do you know i got my i got every time i go out and i get my uro, my my urology i i usually take a pee test right uh and and with him I took one once, and every time for the last 10 years, 15 years, as long as you've known me, I've had blood in my urine. Right. A little minute amount of blood. Uh, I know because he tells me all the time. No, 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 but I, I've always had it. Mm -hmm. So I have to warn doctors before they have me pee in the glass. Hey, hey look, I got blood in my... When you put the little thing in the dipstick and you see blood, don't panic because I It's have, always there. Somewhere there's a little bit of blood leaching. It could be from the prostate. It could be from the kidneys, whatever. Anyway, so the first time I went to this guy, I peed in the glass. And he checked it out, and I didn't have any blood in my urine. Yeah. And then the second time I went to him, I had blood in my urine. He didn't check me today, but I looked at my workup from the lab... Uh, that I got, where I got the bad news about the PSA. The um, what are you doing? Huh? <laughs> I'm going to an early death. Yeah. Anyway, yes, I hope so. Anyway, <laughs> uh, no. What I was going to say was that I got my urology back as well uh, uh, in the, the doctor, Doctor Kinnish's uh, report, and there was no blood this time. So that's starting to worry me. Why don't I have blood in my urine anymore? Here we go again. You know, so. Anyway, yeah. I, you know, I, I just, look, I, I live with the fear every day that I'm trying to figure out what is, is it that's going to get me. I look forward to it. Actually, 2023 is getting nicer and nicer is that, every day. Is that your year? January 2023. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the exact date, but I'll, I'll settle for but, January. No, here's what it was. Larry Bubbles Brown <laughs> had this site you could go to. I don't even know answer where Answer a few questions. You answer a few questions, and then it tells you when you're going to die. The date, the exact the, the date. The exact date you're going to die. So now she's convinced she's going to die in 19, No, I didn't say that. Not convinced I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Well, of course you're going to die. No, but it's going to be, I'm going to do it. Oh, not, you're, you're oh, gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, you're going to do it. Yeah, that's how I know oh. that's the date. Oh, you're not expecting me to join no, you no, in no, this No, 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 no. I'm going to leave you with all this stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, and you have to deal with it. 2023, I'm going to be 83 then. I'm going to be too old to do much of anything. So could you do it earlier? No. Oh, okay. January 2023. Yeah. I figure this, this planet's going to explode anyway. Why do you think the planet's going to explode? Well, it's going to hell. I mean, I think human beings are about to be extinct, and they should be. We've caused so much damage to this planet. Well, it's it's and it's going to take several, you know, centuries to heal. It's certainly not beautiful out there. It's terrible. You know. Uh, now you wrote something, and I didn't know that this was going on. Is, is the Senate is thinking of Senate? It's already in their proposal to cut Medicare. 
Social Security and um, what's the other one? Medic Medicare. Uh, Medicaid. No, no, it's Medicaid. It's Medicaid, Medicare, yeah. and Social, and Social Security. Security. Now, uh, now, w whose plan is this? This is Paul Ryan's, and this is to make up for the big, big trillion dollar deficit from that great tax bill. Oh, so, so they, have to, they have to put money back somewhere. So we're going to kill old people to yeah. give younger people more money. Yeah. I you, know, you know, we always say, give them a, a suicide vest. See, they have I, nothing to live for. Well, well no, <laughs> what I was saying was... I would join you, it. You don't fuck with old people. They have nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose. They're the ones that can strap a bomb vest And themselves. walk into the Senate chamber. You know, you get... What we do is we find everybody who's got like uh, you know they're terminally ill. Hey, I'll volunteer because you know. it'll probably be. Oh, but you know now what? You know what's going to happen now? Uh, the Secret Service will be dropping by here after because, because of your your suggestion, hey. your little suggestion. You know, I think it's a great idea. Senior citizens have nothing to to, to lose. Well, go uh, fuck with their social security and watch what happens. You know, it's really They're funny a about big you, voting. You block. know, it's very funny about Paul Ryan. I believe he went to school, courtesy of social security. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, uh, 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 why they want to go after old people like this? Because you know? it's an easy target. It's the only uh, for a lot of people. It's it. It's their only lifeline. I mean, that's going to be ours as soon as I leave this job. Well, no, no. We've got look. We've got. We do have. I'm not a, talking about. I'm just saying income that's coming in. Oh yeah, our yeah. income will be yeah. just uh, not just social security. Yeah, but we do. And, but we do have other. Sag. We do have other money to keep us going. We'll be fine. But that's not the issue. That's not what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah. Some people. That's it for them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, considering the rent we're paying. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that goes on forever too. Five years. It is five years. Yeah, isn't we're into it? the fifth year. Well, it, it, as of April, it's five years, but officially, legally, it's August. Uh, because uh, April was when we f made, paid our last payment to the guy who was renting us the place <laughs> because he couldn't do what he was doing, and August was when uh, our lease was up. Our lease was literally up. Yeah, and by the way, it was up after his lease was up. <laughs> and I, every day, every day, I look at my mail and I'm going, uh, I, you know, I'm looking for the lawyer's name on a, on a note. Just hey, today's the day, right? Today's we it. get some more. Nothing. 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 The nada. The last time we went to court on this thing, where they made their arguments, was, was in, in January. No, it was in February. Remember January? Oh, right. When then, and then they said in March they'll have a decision. Uh, well, no, he. Well, uh, she'll read the she, reports. She'll read the reports. And then she asked for more reports. And now here we are. And here we are. And she, this, the judge hasn't read shit, you know. Yeah. So, what are you doing? I'm just putting the toilet paper under this third leg. Explain that, will you? No, please? It's, it's, it's your thing. It's not toilet paper. Sure looks like it's it. It's towels. It's paper towels. You still you well, your I, ass I use it to uh, to buffer because if I if I have these microphone stands sitting on the table, it rattles. The vibration. There's some vibration in here. And well, listen. If I do this, watch. I'll take mine off. Um, maybe you don't hear it. I guess you don't. <laughs> well, anyway. I will. Uh, I'm gonna put this back the way I want. It's uh, ten eighteen. Stop it. I'm just stop it. Giving stop an update. It, stop it. Stop it. Do you believe what I have to live with? What do you mean? I'm I'm a delight. <laughs> Listen to Mr. Grumpy. Look, look, I'm a delight. Look, look. I I, I I do my chores around the house. Yes, you do. I empty the dishwasher. Many you make times. the bed. I make the bed every day. Uh, I uh, what else do I do? I. Uh, uh, I'm, I make most dinners. No, you make your meat dinner, and I might join you. Not, I mean, it's you make most dinners for you, but I don't know, necessarily eat those dinners with you. Because why? It's all meat. Well, it's not tonight. It was chicken. Well, I, I, I had a big lunch today. And I could make some fish. You know. I'll make the fish. What do you mean you'll make the fish? Um, you act like I can't cook. No, but I'm good at fish. You know. Like, I'm, I'm developing right now a chicken dish. I'm developing it. Next, I'm, I, uh, today I got how long it takes to make the, the actual uh, chicken. It's not breast, it's uh, uh, slices. And then I put them in flour. 
and then I, I saw how long it took to cook them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix figure out some kind of sauce to put in there like you know put wine or something like that in with the chicken and then i will have a lovely chicken dish for you mm. what do you mean oh. i'm looking forward to it you don't think i can do it? i didn't say you can't do it make dark meat for me no i make breasts these mm. are breasts i'm working on it's a breast thing i look forward to it with yes. the light you know but uh, 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 because there is, a, you, you you don't cook dark meat in the same way you cook a breast. You can't like I do the stove top. I do and then maybe I'm gonna maybe add a baking element to it and uh, just surprise uh, me. I don't want to hear the detail. But I'm I'm trying to figure out Nick. My next step is how to how to add uh, wine into it. It's called taking the top of the pot off. Opening the bottle of wine and pouring it into it. But there's already oil in there. So you add it. Oh, okay. And so if I'm, I'm, I'm trying that. And when the oil settles at the top, you skid it off. Yeah, maybe I'm going to figure some way to put prosciutto or bacon on there. Yeah, it's mm, good. Okay. What do you mean? What, what I'm you, not saying you, anything. Yeah, look I at said, you. I'm, I said I'm looking forward I'm, to I'm it. I'm cooking, you know. Somebody's got to replace Anthony Bourdain. Uh you know yeah we've been watching his shows uh we watched the one on vietnam vietnam which with with barack obama and i think he was president at the time no no yes he was no because he, he was. went around there after he left no he had the secret service in full he force. has the secret service he, for the rest he of his had life the, the presidential limousine was going through i think that thing was filmed just as he was leaving well office. you'll check but anyway uh, he and they sat down. They had some food together in local in, food in, in Saigon. It yeah. was really it was a, a great show. He did one on Italy on Sicily, in which he, he he doesn't always wax poetic about the place he's at. He he keeps talking about how depressed he is because the food sucks. And then he went and killed himself. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And then but he goes everywhere. I mean the Himalayas and wherever. And I want to see the one on the Bronx. You know, they have on the Bronx, there's one on New Jersey, <laughs> you know. But the thing is that what he did, he had the best job you could possibly have. Oh, my God, have. it's ideal. I mean, I often I say, remember... You All remember, expenses paid. I'm sure he stayed in top places. You remember uh, You remember uh, 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 this guy, remember? Okay. Uh, uh, this guy here, listen. Hi, I'm Robin Leach with those champagne wishes and caviar dreams. And you're listening to the incredible, the memorable, the wonderful, the one and only Alex Bennett. Ah, there we go. Now, now you remember Robin Leach? Yeah. I felt, I told Robin when I interviewed him, when he was actually uh, had available to do that, that I said, you got the best job in the world. I said, you just go around, all around the world to these weird places. His was hotels. No, his was lifestyles of the rich and famous. Right, but I mean, it wasn't just food. It was the whole thing. It was hotels. It yeah. was the food. It was the hotels. Right. It was the, the luxury of the, of the ski he lodge. He stayed at good places. Let's yeah. put it that yeah. way. And I said, you, you, just, you created the best. He says, of course. He <laughs> says, you found me out. That was, that's my whole thing. You know, and this is what it was about, uh, about uh, Bourdain, Bourdain, is that he created the way to do travelogues, which was something I would love to spend my li have spent my life doing, and and, and the, eating and eating, and uh, you know he goes, hmm, I haven't been to Uruguay, Uruguay, let's go to Uruguay. Mm -hmm. I've been to Bolivia, I've, let's go to Bolivia. I haven't been to the Sudan, let's go to the Sudan. But he picks also like out of the way places, like well, a no, lot of street vendors, no. people that are making food right no, on but the street. It's, it's like San Francisco wasn't out of the way, an out of the way place. No, but Vietnam, I mean, he was eating right on the street. Oh yeah, you know, stuff yeah. they're making right there. And, and, but in Sicily, this is how bad things got. He actually went to one place that served horse. Oh Jesus! And they they spiced it up and everything. Did and they, they bring it out whole and then no, no, slice no, no, it? No, it was sliced and it was done on like a like a grill outdoors. So did it get a leg with a hoof? No, it got like a flank or something <laughs> like that. And he he ate it and the guy said, "How is it?" And he says, "Not bad. He's pretty good." Yeah, you know. Uh, horse, uh, a lot of places. In I'm the world sure over horse. the life of us, we've all eaten it, but just haven't. I've never eaten horse. I'm saying we probably have, but didn't know it. Uh, you know what I ate once, and I didn't know I was eating it. Uh, was um, uh, what was it? Um, Sounds like no. This was when I was in the um, 
Army? Every day when I was in uh, in the, doing the uh, the Olympics in in, uh, in uh, Lillehammer, right next door there was a hamburger joint, and so uh, I would run over during the breaks and get us hamburgers, and we ate about five of these hamburgers a day. They were delicious, and then somebody told me they were like horse meat, m- like dog, uh, no moose. Or something like moose that. Moose isn't bad. I've had moose. No, or, or, or elk or uh, uh, something that, and I went, oh, well, I ate it. Yeah. And it was okay. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Was it elk? Was it moose? Was it, it was something, but it was disgusting. It was uh, if, you, if I said to you we're going to eat elk this tonight, you wouldn't want to eat it. depends on how it's prepared. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, I, 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 you know, they said, yeah, I hear we, this is all we eat. Or it, we don't have cattle here, you nuts, you know. So They still eat dogs in China and Korea. What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Hmm? I'm thinking. I make one of the weirdest things you've ever eaten. I make tripe. Oh. Uh. I love tripe. 1025, just Good. giving you an update. I love tripe. I know you love it. It's comfort food for you. It's the way chicken yeah, my soup My mother is. used to make it. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. comfort food. Yeah. What is the worst? Not the worst. She also made tongue. I love tongue. My mother loved tongue. I could never get into it. Yeah. I've eaten turtle. You were eating turtle. Well, yeah. That, uh, that would be, yeah. And it tastes like chicken. It was quite good. Well, if it tastes like chicken, why didn't you just have chicken? Because we were in a place that specialized in that. Yeah. You know, Driving down to um, Florida, and this was in Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, I guess, I, I don't know, Scargo, I guess, you know, snails. Probably the weird, one of the weirdest I've ever eaten. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a food that you have to develop a well, taste Well, somebody for. forced me to do it. Because it's all about okay. the sauce that's in it. I it's was not a, the actual. I was at dinner years ago out in the island. At, the, at Jerry Wexler's home. He was the head of uh, Atlantic Records. And they were going to serve... Oh, no, no, this was somewhere else. That, that was where I first had lobster, and I'd never had lobster in my life. But no, there's this other place. We went to eat dinner at some people's place. And they it was snails. But they weren't serving anything else. Wow. Okay, so I was forced to be the good guest and eat the snails, and then I ate the snails, and they were okay. That's the way I was with the oysters, not oysters, oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, mussels. Mussels, I love mussels. Yeah, but oysters. it's a developed taste, I and it's all about the sauce. Well, because I they mean, really have no taste. The same way with uh, 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 snails have no taste. Right, but it's the I think sauce. snails were invented by a guy who wanted to impress it's a girl. It's the sauce. The and, same and way with say, look same at, way with mussels. Look at what I can eat. You know, I, I think it's how bullfighting was invented. Look, I'm going to go out there with this red uh, cape, uh, uh. you know. But but you knew that the bull would charge at the red cape; he wouldn't charge at you. So, and then the woman went, "Oh, you're wonderful. You're strong. Let's go home and fuck." I'm going to do a rollover. No, you're not. It's twenty-eight no. after. You only have to have me do this with my it's, foot it's because my 10, feet are It's twenty-eight. Okay, my so next big stop at the doctor's is going to be for these numb so feet. So start setting it up. I know. I already. I already have a data for the neurologist. No, I'm talking about the. No, it's no, over. no. Well, it's sit over there while I set I'll, it up. I'll set it up. It's set almost it up. ten twenty nine almost. God, I don't know why I have you on this show. I question I, that. I, also. I guess it's because it it makes my life a little easier since I then don't have to do any major programming. Uh, okay, you want to come over? I'm coming over. Okay, she wants to come Rolling over. Here over. we, here we go. All right. Down there. What? Just, just don't, well, don't worry don't wanna, about. I, the, I don't want to. Well, then don't. My chair over. What? It. It, oh boy. You're, well, you got to turn around. You're a pain in the ass. You know that. I know. You really are. Okay. Well, we're ready for the people to call. Let like me just hat. turn it on like here. My hat? Huh? I'm wearing your hat. You're wearing my hat? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Now we're online so that Just if people want to call us. What? Who is she? I have no idea <laughs> who that picture is. It says, how to make free voice and video calls, and then it's, it, well, you, I'll show you, folks. There's Ray. You got a picture of a woman. Who is that? She's been there. Forever. For every day of my life, uh, as long as I've had Skype. Uh, you know, but anyway. Call in. 
What? Please, you promised me. Brian? Don't. Ray? Don't beg. Phil, where are you, Phil? Oh, God. <laughs> you beg like I do. That's a, <laughs> I'm helping you. Shouldn't your do that. What? I'm helping your program. Oh, look, a lot of people are watching. Why? Are we fighting? Tom Amaguchi. Oh, right. That's what it was. What? That's what it was. Thank you, Tom. See, what? My brain is going. I couldn't remember. You know what we were eating with those burgers? What? Reindeer. Ah, that's supposed to be good. Reindeer. Yeah. And, but we, it was, it, it, they were great hamburgers. But yeah. then when I found out they were reindeer, I couldn't do it anymore. Like as a Santa? Well, yeah, not <laughs> Santa. <laughs> you know. I mean, we sing about them at Christmas time and things like that. Rudolph. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now call in, Tom. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, uh, our our number is uh, it was Skype. It's GabNet Live. If you're using Skype, if you're not using Skype, go over to GabNet Live or GabNet.net rather. GabNet.net, and on the right hand side of the page, at the very bottom, there's a phone number you can use, and you can call Hello. using a phone. And Jeff, where are you? Huh? Where's Jeff Stein? I don't know. We're waiting for somebody to call. We're I, waiting. Usually the first person in is, is, Phil. is Phil. And then we just shut up for the rest of the show. Hmm. Phil, where are you when we need you? Don't beg. I'm you, tired. you do realize there's a good minute, minute and a half between the time we say we've gone to the phones and the time that they actually hear that we've gone to the phones. Well, it's two minutes already. No one's calling in. Well, maybe they don't like you. Well, that could be. You could have just uh, completely chased them away. I probably have. You know, and I'm waiting for the first person to call, whoever that might be. Whoever that might be. Ah, da, 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 da. Are you oh, here we go. Here what comes Phil. Phil. Look, he changed his picture. No, that picture he's had for a while. Oh, has he? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hey, yep, Phil. Yep. 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 Hey, hey, how you doing? Thank uh, God you're not wearing that "Make America Great Again" hat. Are you uh, thinking? Uh, are you thinking differently about our president? Uh, I like him more every day. Oh God! <laughs> he's just uh, he's just been a been a treat, hasn't he? He's doing everything he promised he'd do, and he's standing up to those that uh, don't want to make America great again. Uh, 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 how wasn't America great? Uh, we were giving away. No, no, no. Uh, that has nothing to do with great. You're, you know what? Great. What had happened was. Uh, after World War II. Okay, this is. Uh, wait a minute. Somebody is calling here that's never called before. Liz. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tom. Uh, Liz. Uh, or Sandra. Hey, Laz Tom. Monaro. Are you there, oh, oh. Sandra? Are you there? Hey, Tom. I but hold have to on. Do hold the on. Same thing, hold, on. See? We, hold on. Can you hear me, Sandra? Sandra? Sandra. I hear clicking. Are you there, Sandra? Well, I'll hang up on her. Go back. What the hell? You know, uh, you know she, if somebody doesn't uh, doesn't identify call immediately, themselves. doesn't identify themselves immediately. Later for them. Yeah, no, he, he, he thinks Trump is just doing a bang-up job. Figures. Well, you know, there was a time when other countries needed our help uh, to, uh, to not only westernize, but to uh, help their, their people gain a better way of life like who uh, well like china like china and, and oh, china we never helped china we bought their shit well that's and because that's because they made shit we wanted to buy yes but we didn't you put had to have you had to, ha you, you had to have your iphone we didn't put big tariffs on them and it, it was long before that you know uh countries in europe after world war ii they needed our help retooling rebuilding that was called well, it was a thing called it was called it was called lend lease and it was a big I boom look, hey it was a big boom to the u.s yeah, Pero, but it got us out of the, the depression it's time for the pendulum to swing the other way. It swung. God, we had almost th up to 35 people listening to us, and now we're down to 31 wow. since Phil started yapping. Guys, I'm going to uh, say an early I'm, good night. I'm not listening anymore. That was probably good for four. Hey, Tom. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yes, hey. Tom. Tom. Hey, Tom. I only called in because you asked me to. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're the best. Thank I you wasn't so going to call in, but you asked me to. I did. And yes. And now she's leaving. Welcome and to my world. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Marjorie. Yeah. You, you you grew up in the Philadelphia area, right? Philadelphia. I went over Brook High, West Philly. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I I grew up in South Jersey. We'll have to talk about Philadelphia sometime. Yeah, it was. A, I found it was a great city to grow up in. You know, it's like our parties in high school were Coca Cola parties. It was like all like good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was fun. I, That's when, used, I had a, my aunt lived in Levittown, and I had New friends York, in Cherry Hill in New Jersey. Yeah. That's probably close to what That's, Tom was talking about. They're very right near where the I, bridge, I yeah. was living until I was about 13. Yeah, in beautiful Cherry area. Yeah. Uh, I used to go to Washington's Crossing, Bucks County. Uh, yeah. A new hope. Yeah. I mean, that area that is is spectacular. Yeah, yeah it's great. Where, uh, Jessica Savage was. Uh, was she? Died. Was a new hope. Really? Oh, really? In a car yeah. crash, right? Yep. Wow. He's the expert an, on people, uh, artist people dying. Yeah. Uh, By the way, somebody was, died. I can't remember his name now. The people today. Who died. And died. you probably read about oh, it. Oh, he was a he, journalist. No, he was a he was gay, and he created in, in New York when they wouldn't serve gays. He started the sip-ins. He called. Mm -hmm. them. Good night, everyone. Uh, and oh, I, good I, night. I, in fact, I, maybe I can I can bring up his name here. Uh, Dick yeah. Leitch is his name, I think. Mm. I haven't heard of that An guy. Early force for gay rights is dead at 83. His 19 by dear, uh, his 1966 sip in helped pave the way for gay bars to exist legally oh. in New York. Sorry. Oh, I see it. Yeah. yeah. So I beat you to one. I beat you to what, one. What's a what's a sip in? It was you know it was like uh, you know like a sit in like a sit in at oh. a counter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I see. Like a lunch counter. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, um, that that he's he's dead. So I thought you'd you'd want to know that. Um, otherwise, uh, anybody died that we should know about in the last? Uh, you heard about Coco, right? Coco. Coco the gorilla. Oh, Coco oh, yeah. the gorilla. Yes. Your old sign it's language, sign language. gorilla, that likes cats. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, yes, he liked cats a lot, and he and he, and he ate them. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, the I, I heard a uh, story, and I would assume that it's true, that uh, Coco the gorilla did something or broke something or knocked something off a table and signed that the cat did it. <laughs> so, I don't think so. Yeah, it uh, was on the I, the story. Story. I don't. I don't right. think so. Look, yeah. who, look who's yeah, doing Coco the gorilla blames cat for... Uh, uh, Luke is joining us. Rob Alfano. Hello, Rob. How are you this evening? Wait a minute. Rob, can you hear us? Rob, can you hear us? Oh, he's having some kind of problem. He'll, he'll, and, and, and now, and now I, uh, well, there goes Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway. Um, yeah, he's probably talking to that gal that called you. What? He's talking to that gal that called you that didn't get through. Oh, uh, oh, a new oh. caller five minutes ago. Yeah. Well, who knows who that is? You know, that could have very easily been. Uh, what happens is we get uh, uh, some women, shall we say, uh, who are trying to make money, uh, who suddenly somehow call you on Skype lines. Now, this really? woman looks older, so it doesn't look like she, that was her case. But, no, I, I, I've had to, uh, sometimes people say, I want to be a friend or I want to be, you know, a contact. And I check them out, and it's, it's like, it looks to be a hooker. Okay. <laughs> so I don't make them that okay, way. Okay, here's, here's the article. Uh, it's on Reddit. Coco the gorilla once ripped a sink out of a wall, and when her keepers confronted her about it, she blamed the kitten, signing the cat did it. And uh, that's yeah. got it, 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 that's got to be a phony story. Uh, Reddit, I think, is a legitimate. Uh, no, it isn't. R e d d i t. No. I'm, oh, no, it's, what do you, it's no, it called isn't. Reddit. Therefore, it must be real. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Well, I, I, Reddit.com. I, I don't know where, where they lean, but why would they come up with a Coco num, uh, thing? And uh, I don't uh, know because a lot of times there are these uh, these uh, what we call uh, folk tales. You know, <laughs> these urban legends. Well, 
if you believe that the Coco de Gorilla can sign, yes. uh, blame the cat. But it didn't didn't mean that that actually happened. You know? well, yeah. Plus, in addition, people have actually disputed how well Coco actually communicated through sign. There's been yeah. sort of controversy regarding that. Okay, now here comes Rob again. Can you hear us now, Rob? I do. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Turn, hey. turn down your mic just a little bit. It's a little overmodulating, but otherwise we can hear you. What? I said I'm lucky it even works. I'm not... Uh, this new Skype is... Uh, I just don't know where the where all the controls are anymore. Well, do you, do you have... Here. Oh, here we go. Okay, but do you have... Uh, if, if if you have uh, a PC, you know, you can get cl Skype Classic if you're bothered by the new Skype. Uh, that, that, however, is not being afforded most people who have Macs, though. They have to do the I new. don't even know. Uh, is there another update on the Mac? Here, I'll look. No, well, it, I think you're using a PC, right, Rob? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, so. there is a new uh, Skype update for uh, the Mac. Yeah. But I haven't uh, downloaded. Well, I don't do it. All right. <laughs> I, I, so, I, you know, talking about pets that talk, yeah. I read an article about dogs and that they can actually communicate certain things. You know, putting their paw on, on your arm means they want to be uh, petted. Uh, when they stand on their hind legs and uh, go like this, that means they want food. Uh, you know, so they they actually do communicate with us. Well, no, the dogs. I mean, all animals that are pets uh, use sign language and mime and you know, feign things. That, you know, I, of course, dogs are very famous for one thing, and that is that if you yell at them, uh, they start limping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I I could never yell at my dog. It's, that's why I didn't because I, I, I that's why I like cats over dogs. Dogs do this whole limping routine. You yell at a cat and he just looks at you like, "Fuck you," just yeah. "fuck you." Okay, fine. One time I remember yeah, if they look, I want to feed and, and groom and and take care of somebody that uh, another person that just tells me "fuck you." Well, you know, we uh, <laughs> for for a while there with cats and stuff. Every now and then I would like if they did something bad, I would just pat them on the butt you know uh, oh, cat abuse yeah cat abuse and yeah. i finally decided that that was wrong you yeah. know uh, so i decided to just get all the cats i had five of them at the time and i gathered them all in the bedroom sitting on the bed it's like the cat lady. and i i had a i gave them a speech and i said you know we all live in the same place together and we've got to be considerate of each other and, uh, you know, you just can't be shitting anywhere you feel like shitting. You have to shit in the box where you're supposed to shit in the box, not in the bathtub. And, uh, uh, and, and I said, now, let's all try and get it together. And, and I tried this very reasonable approach. And, of course, after it was over with, they were back to doing whatever they wanted to do. So not I found... Not one of them looked at you either. Huh? Not one of them looked at you either. Oh, they, they were staring, actually. They were, they were rather <laughs> amused by the fact that I was giving this lecture to them. I found, Alex, that the best thing with pets or animals is positive reinforcement. They don't understand negative reinforcement. So, you know, you just reward them for the good things that they do. I do the same thing with employees. <coughs> uh, I, I'm beyond... <laughs> what, um, when they do something good, you throw them a fish? Or that's wrong. I just reward what they do right and, and what, what, how do you do that by, th by throw, by, you know throw what they understand more than one word walk 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 oh yeah employees yeah yeah no cats and oh. employees <laughs> well no, there was a remember gary larson he had the far side he yeah, had one yeah. cartoon about what you say bad dog uh alfie bad dog you've been a bad 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 dog alfie what the dog hears Blah blah blah, Alfie. Blah yeah, blah blah, exactly. Alfie. <laughs> blah, the Simpsons blah, blah. did a thing huh? about that. What? The Simpsons did a thing about that. Yeah. They they made fun of that. Wah 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 wah. You know whatever yeah. the words they understand. Right. Uh, yeah. But uh, no. But 
I well, I I, I mean, it was never abusive with my pets at all. But you know, occasionally you would yell at them, or I'd give them a little pat on the rump, saying, "Don't do that, bad bad cat." And of course, they would look at me like they, they did. They give me the they'd give me the claw, you know. Uh, <laughs> and uh, that's why I like cats. I mean, cats. Uh, uh, you pretty well have to earn their respect. Dogs, hey, dogs, your friend, no matter what. Hey, you can beat yeah. me, you can hit me, you can abuse me. I don't care. You're my master, and I love you, and I will be loyal to you. Yep. Uh, fuck uh, that attitude. It's not true. Uh, if, That's if like people who voted for Trump. You know, dogs I mean, remember, dogs remember. My dog must have been abused by a fat Mexican woman, because any time. She sees fat Mexican woman. She growls. She doesn't. She doesn't like them. And we found out that that was the woman that adopted her. Left her in a cage. Didn't give her any food. Uh, they stayed in the cage. She couldn't uh, pee or or poo. And then threw her out on the freeway. She probably uh, came over the border at the wrong it, time. Probably. Uh, <laughs> you know. But uh, that. So I can I can tell that that's uh, you know the dog reacts to that dog loves everybody except that Mexican women. Okay, so I I got something to talk about here. I uh, um, last time we were having this discussion about uh, like if you met a really hot woman and you were going out with her and all of a sudden you found out that she uh, uh, that she was for Trump. Uh, would Works you, for me. Would you would you continue the date, or would you just excuse yourself and send her on her way? Uh, and and Tom, yes, Tom. I think Tom said he would uh, kick her to the that curb. Was right? Other night. Huh? That was Wednesday. Oh, it was night. Wednesday night. Well, you see how old I'm getting. Uh, <laughs> I only kick them to the curb well, if they smoke. A, anyway, we had that discussion. Yes, Patrick. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, is your microphone on, Patrick? Yeah, yeah. yeah it, barely. It, well, okay. no, no, just don't talk, and then it will be louder and louder as he talks. I've found that to happen with Patrick's. Go ahead, Patrick. What are you going to say? I was just going to say what Phil did. Really, the only thing that is a non starter for me is if they smoke. Other than that, I mean, my ex, she was as liberal and as much of a Democrat as you could get. But we never discussed politics. I mean, everything else, we, we got along and everything was fine. So it depends on how bad you want to make your own life. Yeah. If you want to yap about politics, you'll have a miserable relationship. If that's something that you can keep to the side, well, it works. And it did. Okay, well, today I had to run over to my urologist because I got back my PSA test and it had gone up. Okay. Well, what is it now? Three, four. That's still pretty damn good. I know, I know, I know. But you know me. Okay, I panic. So, but especially I was, since it's enlarged. But I was able to see, uh, it's not that enlarged. I was able no. to see the doctor. Uh, uh, get, uh, and I went over to see him. And uh, he, you know, I've had trouble finding a good urologist because they, they're all so evil, every one of them. I mean, I had one that was just ghastly. Every time I go over there, try to stick some pipe up my dick, you know. Uh, and and then I got another one, and he was it was like he was too busy having a happy fizzies party with the crew, with the team. You know, they were all hanging out in his office, and I'm thinking, pay attention to my prostate, will you, please? Uh, I I didn't like him, so I stopped going to these guys for a while. Then finally, I had a problem, and I asked my doctor, my prime primary physician, for the name of a doctor, and he gave me the name of this guy, and I liked him. I liked him because. He's he answers your questions and he makes you feel good and he doesn't doesn't let you panic and he's, he has a very good bedside manner. So uh, of course I have this thing where my prostate uh, my PSA goes up and I have to go see the doctor and he does all the wonderful he tells me all about no problem he says you're still well within good numbers and even if it does go up at your age. Uh, how we treat it is we don't even remove the prostate. We use hormone treatment. Uh, he said, I've taken people, put them on hormone treatment, and gotten their PSA down to one, you know. Uh, but you going to become Miss Alex Bennett? No, no. But he said, anyway, hormone treatments, uh, you know, and uh, that he actually for uh, a, um, 
a biopsy if, if we ever have to do it. And he says, I doubt if we'll ever have to do it. He said, uh, we, we put you out. I, I, I give you uh, anesthesia and, and anesthetize you. But anyway, so, I mean, this is a good guy. And then he said to me, and I'll don't, I said, should I, do I have anything to worry about here? And he said, no. He said, and if there's anything to worry about, let me worry about it. I, he says, that's my job. He, I said, but no. He said, things, you know, I have a, I looked at your prostate last time with a sonogram. It looks fine. What I think the problem may be is you have calcium deposits on your prostate, which is not a bad thing. They just happen over the years. I guess it's starting to atrophy or something. He said, but the margins of those calcium deposits could be uh, uh, not, not infected, but inflamed. And that could be causing it. He said, so next time, about six months from now, go get another PSA. And, and I want you to take five days worth of these anti-inflammatory pills and then go take the test. And we'll see if that's what's, what's causing it to rise. He said, but I'm not worried and whatever. And so I really like this guy, right? Makes me feel calm. You know me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a worrier about this stuff. And then I said to him, so how's, how's business in the, with the new administration and everything? He says, well, you know, I'm a Trump guy. Oh. Now, this is a guy that literally is holding my balls in his hands, okay? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he, you know, and, and I'm going, well, I could say something. I, what I said was that I just gotten this new insurance from the Screen Actors Guild. And so he said, well, you know, the Screen Actors Guild doesn't like people like me because I like Trump. That's what he said. Okay. He's right. And uh, uh, all, all I could think of was I could, I could sit here and argue with him, but I'm not going to because I found myself a decent uh, urologist. So therefore, I became the capo at, the, at, the, uh, at Auschwitz. Who's trying to save my life? How's his fingers? <laughs> but what I'm wondering is now that he knows that I'm with Screen Actors Guild and I might be against Trump, is he then going to do a lousy job for me? Or do you think it's it's not going to... You need a biopsy. <laughs> it's not going to affect him. Yes, Patrick. You became a normal fucking person, Alex. I mean, people who put their politics before every fucking thing, it just beyond... I mean, people have different opinions, and you know what? If he's a professional, who gives a shit if he voted for Sanders, if he voted for Hillary, Trump, whoever? And the same with you. He's going to look at you as a patient. I mean, I've got doctors that have told me their political leanings that are different than mine. I don't give a shit. As long yeah. as you're doing your job, good enough. And yeah, if well, he didn't, he didn't know. People, they need to get a fucking life. Yeah, yeah. I'll I was talking to somebody today that was talking, you know, that was talking about a friend of his that they don't speak to each other because they were talking about their politics and all of a sudden one was for Trump and one was for uh, Hillary and they don't speak to each other anymore. And I'm going, what the hell? You know, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. You yeah. know, have an opinion. You know, everybody's got an asshole. Everybody's got an opinion. You know, well, what's I, the, what's, I, I, I'm looking at this guy. Like I'm looking at this guy on a professional level and on a professional level. Uh, he's taking good care of me. You know, he's going to look at me every six months, watchful waiting yeah. and all of that. And uh, he's he's on the case, you know. And so Let that I, stuff getting between you. It's ridiculous. Well, I know I'm never going to die from this thing because he's, he's I've got a guy watching out for me. Um, but uh, I'm getting sick of people drawing blood on me. But, you know, it's. But when you got people up in the, uh, on the higher ups standing up on TV, making that decisive uh, you know those decisive kind of statements. It it just it just entices it. I today I was watching TV and I was coming to the uh, slow decision about something that uh, and and Rob I don't know whether you agree with this or not since you're you've been in the media but I'm getting worried that the media is getting to be too anti-Trump. I, I you, you know the same thing I, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. It seems to me that the Democrats are getting holier than thou. Well, but it, it's like I turn on TV, and, and especially with this whole thing with the kids, you know, being taken away from their parents, they are flacking it so hard, it seems like they're flacking it in a direction where they're also trying as a byproduct to get Trump. They All got right? nothing else. Wait, let me finish, Phil. Come on, I'm, I'm not on your side, but I'm close to it on this topic. 
What I'm like, saying yeah, is, is, that, mean, is that we they could do too much overkill on this and screw up the elections in the fall, because uh, a lot of people will be turned off by this by this idea. You know, does this make sense? That might be what Trump's playing. What, what I think it's human nature. What? I think because they're being attacked by Trump so much, fake yes. news, fake media, and all that. I think when you're being attacked, you attack back, right? Well, and then that, he could be that's playing that's that as well. He could be playing that. Yeah. Uh, yes, Patrick. Uh, last night or the night before on CNN, my state senator, one of the two, was interviewed and was asked about the immigration thing. Mm -hmm. And her name is Tammy Baldwin. And she's about as M of a light bulb as you can get. And she proved it during this interview. The interviewer, uh, a female, I don't know who it was, asked her, um, so everybody is having a problem with what's going on with the immigration thing, mm -hmm. and blah, 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 blah. And she said, and in 2014, there was a similar incident under President Obama. Yeah. Uh, did you speak up then? And all she did was go round and round about well, we should focus on what's happening now. And uh, she never answered the question directly. She kept going after what was happening now. And the reporter or the uh, interviewer asked her a second time that something like, okay, but did you speak up about it when it was under President Obama? And she wouldn't answer the question. She kept going, spinning around. Well, so, yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That's necessarily a fair question because what was going on under Obama was it had a slightly different nature to it. It wasn't the same kind of situation. Yeah, but it's a simple question: yes or no. But, Did you speak up against it or not? He well, built the cages. He built the cages, but not for kids, Phil. Well, they were built. They were built to to take care of of, of the migrant overflow. Uh, but not to not to put little kids in there, and give them uh, you know mylar blankets to keep warm, uh, you know. Plus the fact that forget it, forget anything Obama did. Obama could have raped these babies, and it wouldn't matter. What matters yeah. is is that Trump has done nothing about it, and he owns it now. Okay, and what went on in the last couple of weeks with these kids and these kids being separated from their parents was a product of his behavior and of his administration and of his doing. So no, don't go back and do what about Obama? No, what about Trump? He could, he could have done, and he did it finally with a sweep of a pen, reverse this whole thing, but he didn't want to do that. But he wanted it to be permanent. He wanted the Congress to do their job and make legislation that he would sign and take care of it. The Congress he was using that, Phil. He was using that as an excuse for not doing anything, no, Phil. The, the this Congress guy, he lit the fire. He lit the fire. He poured gas on it, and then they threw water on it. Right. Yeah. They instead of doing their job and and getting to the getting to the bottom of uh, this issue and doing something about the borders what, what is the issue phil what is the issue come on tell me what the issue is the issue is is that our borders are porous and uh we're and we need to enforce uh the they're laws less poor, they're to, less poor uh, they're less the, porous in the last five or ten years than they were before that we always it's getting worse we always used to talk about mexicans coming over here as wetbacks you know, well, maybe you did, but uh, you know, I have a lot of Mexicans that work for me, and they're, uh, they're they here illegally. They have uh, their proper papers, mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, green, uh, whether it's a green card or citizenship and a social security card, and and a legitimate I nine, uh, and they work mm -hmm. hard. How do you know and they're legitimate? They're here legally. Yes, uh, Tom. And there were bills that uh, are attempted to the Congress attempted to pass during both. Bush and Obama, that would give these people a path to citizenship, and the extreme right of the Republican Party just blocked them in every case. Just all over they them. They may be blocking them now. They may be blocking, blocking them now. now. Exactly. But, yes, exactly. But, They're still wait, blocking wait, wait, them. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold, hold on a second, Phil. Your, hold on a second. There are a couple of other people here who want to talk. Uh, Rob, uh, Tom was talking, and Rob was starting to talk. 
Uh-huh. What I was going to say is the the right is it, the the far right is is blocking this, and Trump keeps saying the Democrats are blocking it. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I don't know. I hadn't looked at the vote to to know who is blocking the last couple of bills that that came up, and I think it's both of them. I think that the Congress well, who's, in the, who's in the majority? Yeah, who's, who's running? In the majority <laughs> by by a few votes. I believe that the Congress. Is not doing in, their job. In Congress, in, 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 in the House of Representatives, Phil, take a breather. In the House of Representatives, uh, there is uh, uh, more than just a couple of votes difference. Okay, it's a couple of votes difference in the Senate. I think maybe it's one or two, but it's not. It, it, but it's more than that in the Congress. Okay, in the House of Representatives. So, you know, anyway. And this shit was going on when the when the uh, the Democrats were were above were were in charge of the House and the Republicans were shooting everything down before they they were sitting over on the other side of the aisle shooting everything down before so well what were you know, what tit we, for tat now and it, it's going the other way when they want their that's tat, the problem with all the politics it's now. tit for tat and they want their tat back yeah exactly uh, yeah. Um, I, no, I just, I you know, I, I just think it's uh, it's time that uh, these guys started doing something. But the point I'm trying to make here was that the news has been so overbearing about this situation, and using every opportunity to make Trump look bad, that I don't think that's sitting well with the voting population. That's the problem. Well, I, I, I agree 100. I, I, I don't mind the passion involved in all of this. I think what went on with these kids is irreprehensible, and I think Trump should be taken to the woodshed for it. But the manner in which they're doing it may turn off the voting population. Uh, first hand up was Patrick's, and then Tom. Yeah. No, Tom. Oh, he's up first. Oh, you're so polite. Yes. Oh, thanks. Thank you, Patrick. I just want to mention I, I thoroughly disagree. I think if if anything, the, the media has been been too nice to Trump. That's the problem. If any, I mean, if anybody is making problems for Trump, it's, it, it's himself. He he's he's a disaster of his of his own making. Uh, and I mean, I'll tell you, I, I was listening earlier to Marketplace, and you know, not a, a, a particularly liberal, uh, uh, you know, uh, broadcast, but. It was just like one thing after another. How Trump is screwing up on trade. He's screwing up on on our relationships with our with our with our uh, with our allies. It's mm-hmm. just like, what are you going to do? You, you're the media. You have to report what's going on. And the fact is that Trump is a total disaster. I mean, even George Will tonight came out and said. Uh, that uh, that we should be uh, voting Democrat. We we should be putting the Democrats in in charge of Congress next year. So it's such a disaster. Patrick, I, 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 I agree. Like you were saying, Alan, because yes. I've got like my folks and other family members who are John Newell Democrat. Um, they've mentioned the same sort of thing. At what point? Is the news going to report anything decent about Trump? And uh, my stepdad, in particular, uh, has had it up to his neck with immigration issues. And he said, why is it okay that countries like Canada or Spain or or other countries can have stringent uh, rules on getting in but we have to allow every fucking body in the world mm-hmm. through, and then if we don't, we're the bad guy. And I said, you know what? You make a great point. And I told him about Canada Drew, if you have a DUI, you can't go up there. Right. So, you know, you can come in this country with pretty much anything, but you can't go to Canada because you screwed up once and you drank and you, and you drove. Okay. So... On the phone, we've been joined by somebody from the 650 area code. Are you there? Yeah, Alex. How uh, you doing? Who is this? This is Seraphin. What's your name again? Seraphin. Seraphin. Wow, what a nice name. Yes. Yes. Uh, do you have something you want to add to this? No, I just uh, thought it was about time to add a little uh, chorizo to the uh, group collection of kielbasa uh, that I hear most of the time, so I just 
kind of about flying the wall. So yeah. To listen to what's going on. Oh, okay. All right. Well, uh, welcome to. Uh, 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 welcome. What is that? My phone so, is. Somebody's ringing my phone. It's a Skype video. And somebody's trying to call, but it's not this number. Oh, mm. uh, well. Let me just. Uh, how do I turn this thing off so that it doesn't doesn't go? Wait a minute. Let me see who it is. Wait a minute. Uh, hello? Oh, it's Jeff, Stein. Jeff? You're not calling us on the normal way. I got this on my phone. Huh? He's calling an yeah. old... Uh, yeah, something, something like that. Yeah. Well, that's strange. Um, so, uh, Seraphin, anytime you want to jump in, just to say Seraphin, and then we'll know you want to say something, okay? Sounds great. Thank C you, Alex. Because we can't see you. Um, uh, Phil, do you have anything to add to this now? Uh, I just wanted to give everybody else a chance to get their two cents worth in, because you, you become a very active sometimes on this topic. Well, I'm the other side, but uh, uh, I had to turn my fan off before I... Uh, activated the I, mic. I, I turn all my fans off, so don't worry about it. Uh, they, yeah. they have nothing um, to do with me anymore. <laughs> I, I um, you know, what Patrick was saying, uh, that they don't say anything good about Trump. Uh, and I do believe there's go is a backlash, and I think that backlash is is starting to help Trump's numbers. Now, there, there's some other issues that they're going to run on in 2018. I don't know what's going to happen with the tariffs. Uh, I, I don't know what the outcome of that's going to be. I don't know if there's going to be any more uh, negotiation between Kim Jong Un and Trump. Uh, I, you know, there, there's a lot of I don't knows out there. But uh, on the other hand, if they get somebody that actually communicates his message, uh, he may he may do well. And he's constantly uh, in the states that he needed to be, like Wisconsin. And uh, and uh, and and so well, forth. He goes. Uh, he goes to where he knows he won't get booed. No, no. He's going to where he knows that he will get the votes that he needs. He did the same thing during the election. No, but he doesn't fill the halls with people who are dissenters. No, if you're a dissenter, you get thrown out. I, I saw that uh, the other night. I, I think it was in Wisconsin or well, Minnesota. He, well, he should learn how to deal with dissenters. Well, he does. He throws them out. No, no. Besides throwing Tell them, them to come out. to California. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you won't see him in California. No, I don't blame him. Yeah. Yes, uh, Brian. I'm just thinking uh, loosely. Maybe because this is a this is organized by private entities. These uh, these centers that uh, Trump is holding that he's throwing people out of. If there was an act executed or implemented by some judge or something indicating that this, as the as the logic applies to his Twitter. That he cannot uh, ban people from or, or block people from his Twitter following since he is the POTUS right. or SCROTUS. Uh, so too should he not be allowed to throw people out at these centers so that he so that he would be forced to have to hear these dissenting voices out no, but by law. By well, law. You know, by yeah, law. it's interesting. It's well, interesting well, because past yeah. past presidents when this has happened. Uh, I know that I saw Obama did this on one occasion, and I know that uh, Clinton did this on several occasions. When there was some dissenter in the audience and people started booing the dissenter, they would say, no, 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 he has a right to say what he says. And, and you know, it was like almost that wonderful moment with John McCain and that woman who called Barack Obama, you know, uh, uh, Arab. Uh, an Arab or a Muslim. <laughs> And, and and uh, I got coworkers at first student. Who, yeah, who and and McCain it. in the middle of this very heated election said, "Ma'am, I'm running against the man because I disagree with him, but he happens to be a fine gentleman." Well, you why never hear you never hear that from Donald Trump. So why should yeah. we afford Donald Trump the same thing? Well, you know when uh, these these uh, functions. Uh, just like uh, Brian said, it they may be private, and uh, even though I don't think anybody pays to go to them, but uh, you know he's he's uh, I I don't think he's out of out of range when he throws people out that are disturbing the uh, the message that he's trying to work with uh, his supporters. 
I mean, uh, work the room with this propaganda and bullshit translation. Well, that's, it's, well, uh, uh, you you avoided my... Probably you, I don't, people that stand you, behind him. You avoided my point, though, Phil, <laughs> is that no. that he, he, he you want us to afford him the same uh, respect that he does not afford other people. In other words, the way he talks about Barack Obama, for example, is, mm -hmm. is abominable. It is, it, you don't do that. You do not go and, and uh, talk about ex-presidents that way. You let their record stand for itself. You then build your own. And I, Obama, much to his credit, has pretty well kept his mouth shut in all of this because he believes that, uh, hold shut. on a second, because he believes that an ex-president doesn't down the current president, okay? No, or his just successor. Try, they just try to make sure that the DOJ and the FBI make sure that the guy doesn't become president. Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, you're taking us off topic. Saying, I Phil, I'm, you're taking I'm us off topic, and you didn't make a point because you were making another point that had nothing to do with what we were saying. Oh, you that he doesn't afford. I'm saying that he, uh, he should uh, afford uh, uh, Obama the respect of having been an ex-president, but instead all he does is always go after him and belittle and it's him. It's not just Obama, it's all the ex-presidents. Yeah, he does. He talks same. shit about everybody. Yeah, he was he, he was he was elected to clear the swamp. Was, they are the swamp. He, he talks about you, everybody. He you, talks you, about <laughs> Bush. He talks wait, about wait, everybody. Wait, wait, He's wait, wait, God. Let me, let me let me ask him. you this question, Phil. How in the God's name is Barack Obama part of that swamp? That's he, right. And how is Bush a part of that swamp? He, how he is was, Clinton? I mean, I'll tell he's you, talking about no, wait the a minute. Swamp Bush wasn't part of the, the swamp either. Years. Wasn't part it, of the it, swamp. It, it, Everybody before you. him is a piece of shit. Now, what do you, what do you want to when, when, when you talk about people like uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the the uh, his ex lawyer uh, who's in trouble now. Uh, Cone. Cone. Uh, what about uh, what about uh, Manafort? What about people like that? I mean, he brought the swamp with him. This is all if you if you're going to live in a swamp. These people are all in trouble because and, and he brought them along. What you are yeah, around, I, you know, the people you associate with, you know, guilt by association. You ever heard that term, Phil? Yeah, and it's not true. It's not fair. You, you can't make somebody yeah. guilt by association. If you did. Uh, if you, you hire them. It's like shit and it looks like shit. Chances are it's shit well can i can i answer the question why he i'm sure you will treat? okay <laughs> he believes that obama used a number of underhanded things oh, he geez. believes that hillary is crooked you know, no 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 okay. no these okay. are okay. these are a use certain that, hold on analogy a what did bush do uh, bush okay. Bush Bush killed our banking system uh, now wait a minute hold, okay. hold on a second hold okay, on what did the president before that do pardon me we're going. We're going to go back forty years, and I want you to tell me what each president did yeah, that's wrong, was... that they did wrong. So okay. because he's telling us that it every shouldn't... fucking president before him did something wrong, except and he's cleaning up all their shit. Yeah, yeah. So not, okay, not tell me which one. Shit, what he, each one of those shit. did wrong? Because Trump is going to fix all that shit right now, and that's the reason that he's here. Yeah. Because so, every time he comes so... up and tells us what he's fixing, it's somebody else's shit. And I, you know, that's great. Yeah, I'm glad he's fixing, fixing all this shit. Borders. He's fixing the borders. He's fixing the issues that the the Congress has a is a do nothing Congress. He can't fix the Congress. No, but, but, but Phil, 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 Phil. The government's been running for how many years? Fine. And all of a sudden, he's no, fixing everything. No, he that's can't bullshit. fix Congress. Both of you. Wait a minute. The Congress has had a 13 percent approval rating for the last 25 years. Are you telling me they're doing everything fine? What are you living in a dream no, world? No, I said it's been running. I'm not saying yeah, it's been fine, yeah, but it's been, been running. running. They've been raping us. <laughs> Phil, he cannot fix the Congress. No. He has no jurisdiction Remember, over Congress. He, he can he can the president do anything. Out. You're he believing all of his the bravado. He can call them out on their bullshit. And that's you want to know something? What, what he can do if he's a good businessman is he can corral them and sit them down and try and with uh, anima with uh, with uh, amiability and with uh, goodwill 
try to get them to all come to the same place. But instead, yeah. he's driving everybody apart. Well, he, he offered both Democrats and Republicans just yesterday or the day before on this, uh, on this new bill that uh, the first one got shot down. He said, come on to the White House. After uh, he called uh, them all a piece of shit. Yeah. Well, they are. And they are, and and we went to we exactly went to him with with a bipartisan bill. I don't even remember what it was about now, and he wouldn't sign it. Come it to must me. Have been something in there. Bipartisan Come to me, you bill. pieces of it, shit. You say it's bipartisan, but there might have been something in there that uh, he said uh, he would sign a bipartisan bill. I don't remember what it was about, quite frankly. I don't know. Maybe well, then it's a non-starter. It's not a non-starter. Well, let, let, yeah, let's so take. Let, he was freaked out over it. Let's take it a step further. I mean, he all that he's doing right now is simply trying to hold up Congress to give him money to build that stupid fucking wall. Uh, he also wants a number of other things. He he wants merit. Uh, immigration. He wants to break the chain. Uh, immigration. Uh, there, there's, there's a number of things. He's that xenophobic. He, wants. he hates people from other countries. And, That's and not true. Come on, he's got a he's got a history of not you know, renting his apartments. What you see, what you yes, he has a history of not renting his apartments to black people. That's, his that's father did. That's no, he, he, did it, he did it. He did it. He did it. He did it as well, Phil. Yeah. Well, let me let me let me say this. Uh, now I just lost my train of thought. Uh, you know, uh, you know when he brought. But now up you're going to tell me Obama didn't rent the blacks either. No, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't have any rental no whites. <laughs> but uh, look, our our friend Mr. Trump is doing what he said friend. he was going to do for the people that elected him, and you don't okay. you don't. Well, want what this. about the people who didn't elect him, which was a three million dollar, um, three million yeah, person I'll majority? I'll tell you what the story is. Huh? What? I'll tell you what the story is. Uh, what What the Democrats want is they want to flood our. You see, they they're losing the black vote. Unless they get ninety percent of the black vote, they 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 can't move. They, it doesn't move the needle. So they're thinking that the biggest group of people that they can make citizens are the are the Latino mm -hmm. uh, 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 people. So therefore, if they can make them citizens and they'll vote Democratic, that will okay. keep them in office. We've been joined by Ray Renati. Ray, hello. Get your two cents hey. worth in here. Well. I, I've decided that I'm going to use this as an exercise to learn to control my emotions. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, because I need right, to learn try, how to do right. that. Serenity now. Serenity, Serenity now. now, George. <laughs> Serenity now, Jerry. Serenity now. You picked a hell of a venue to do that, I'll say that much. <laughs> and, and Phil and I had a good conversation today, so I don't want to screw that up. Yeah. Even though I, can't, I don't agree with one thing he said. <laughs> what do you mean you had a good uh, discussion? Well, we were talking about cameras and shit. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you see, I mean, that's nice. That puts you all in a nice, uh, warm, fuzzy place, you know. <laughs> We've you know, we would, we would think with Alex, with your ability with photography and so forth, we would think that you'd be more into talking about it, too. Plus, what you're doing with uh, your friends' uh, uh, pictures uh, at life's work, mm -hmm. you know, we thought that you'd be a little bit more into it. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, six seven, eight, 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 nine, eight, nine, ten, a full house. Full house, yes. All right. It is the counter of the full house. We've been joined by Jack Bishop, who has a show called The Intersection. Well, I have to say, he, I saw it. He's that frozen. Melania's um, jacket. jacket for the first time. Yeah. Wow, I didn't realize that it was like a poster on yeah, the back the, of that. The, I thought it made a little field better. There's no way. Somebody, <laughs> well, said, I, I, somebody said it was probably meant to be uh, Trump's teleprompter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it was uh, meant, it, it, if she wore it a, a couple of weeks before the this children thing, yeah. it, uh, it would have made the statement I think she wanted it to make, which was, you know, she doesn't care about uh, what is being said about her. Uh, but, um, it, you know, it was just bad Don't timing. Don't try to explain. And it was a bad idea. Else. It was like a bad idea. timed it just the way wait she minute, wanted. Wait a minute. Before I go to you, Jack, because you have your hand up, pa Patrick had his hand up first. I still don't see the big fucking deal with that jacket. I mean, I, I just, it, yeah, it said that, but anybody with half a brain would realize she wouldn't be going to 
a place like she did in Texas, intentionally wearing something like that, that would say something to insult people. Well, that's and because she doesn't have half a brain. She eats it shit too much. I would, say, I would say you're right, Patrick, but anybody with half a brain would know that she's a model, she's the first lady, and she did it on purpose. Imagine Jackie O doing that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> imagine, if she's, imagine. She knows what she did. If, if Michelle Obama did it, we would have never heard the end of it. And let me also. I thought, I thought um, two different ways, just like you did. I said, oh, she just yeah. wore it. But then I thought, yeah. no, she's a first lady. She's a model. Well, she's looked at for her clothing. Yeah. And, and let's, take a, let's take a. Wait a minute. Let me, hold on a second. Let's take a. Well, one at a time, because uh, Jack's next. He's got his hand up. W the one thing about this is. Where was the person on her staff who saw this big sign on the, her back who didn't go up to her and say, "Don't we can't wear that here. I'll go right. get you something else. You can't, you can't wear that. Yes, Jack. Hey, one of the reporters who travels with you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, your, your mic has the same problem it had last night. It's worse. You're kidding. You can't uh, hear you. you. Just uh, turn it up. All right, I just turned it up. Here. That's better. Now it's all staticky. Now it's staticky. Staticky? Yeah. yeah. No, oh, well, forget. I, I won't even do a show tonight. You know, well, um, I have I have a mixer, and one of the channels went out. Maybe you should switch the mic to a different channel and see if uh, you just got a bad channel. Well, I'll I'll, I'll try that. Um, can you hear me now? As they say on the TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we can hear you. Uh, on the jacket business, one of the reporters that travels with the first lady said. This woman does not wear something without putting a great deal of thought into it. You know, she doesn't pick yep. her clothes like I do where I see, you know, what's the least dirty shirt I have for the day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, to my dear friend, Mr. Meyer, do you really believe that black folk are coming to Trump? If you do, I got some beach front property to sell you <laughs> in Nevada. <laughs> I and believe by, that by the way, by the way, oh, to as an insult to your blackness, uh, Jack, no, he's I, wearing he's wearing his minstrel glove. Is that they don't get out and vote? <laughs> so, oh, we get out and vote. Well, we we think it's black black in, you need ninety percent. You need ninety percent just to get enough votes to 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 turn the clock a little. And uh, we get out and vote when we feel that there are people that will be. Uh, doing things that are in our interests. Other yeah, than you that, voted we for didn't... Obama. Yeah, and we voted for, didn't vote for anyone else. Okay. We voted for Clinton. Brian's got his hand up. So I, I had my hand up, and I wanted to make a, a, a statement about first ladies. Uh, look, you, you said Jackie O. Jackie O made a statement, which was, you can never be too thin or too rich. Now, if you translate that into 2018, that what that means is she was fat shaming people and she was talking down to those that didn't have as much money as her. So, mm -hmm. and, so, and so did Donald Trump when he when he let uh, fired a uh, no, Miss no, no, Universe, no, 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 a Miss no. Universe because she had gotten too fat. Right. That's fine. I understand that. But what <laughs> I'm saying is, is you got a first lady that you held uh, up on a pedestal, and I'm saying that she made a statement that said you could never be too thin or too rich. What and do you think did, about Well, we, we, we held her up on a pedestal so we then. could look up her dress. Okay? Yeah. It didn't matter back then. Times were different. There were songs out there. What's that uh, Frank Sinatra song about you better take care of yourself for your man because he's out at work all day? And what's the name of that Sinatra song? Uh, it's, Sinatra, it's Jack Jones, and the song was called Wives and Lovers. Wives and Lovers. So yeah. that's, you know, a, a very different said, time. Translate, it, translate that statement to 2018 and tell me. Okay, but in 2018, she's wearing this, this jacket that has something on the back that is in bad taste. And somebody well, should have, somebody on her team should have said, I would not wear that. Well, I agree that with that, but it was a good looking jacket. Could it be what? that the people on her team were just doofuses like she is? Well, could it be, like the, could it be, could it be the people on her team don't like her and just went, let her wear it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you I know, believe. somebody <laughs> sabotaged her with a uh, plagiaristic statement during the, uh, uh, in, uh, not the inauguration, but uh, you know, during the uh, Republican convention, mm -hmm. when when Trump got nominated, yeah. I, I have a feeling there might be some people lurking in the midst. Well, I certainly there. want to say, my hats off to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Uh, 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 who? Somebody had his hand up. 
Was it? Brian. Well, yeah, Brian. I was just going to say, uh, part of what I'm going to say is kind of regurgitating what Phil and uh, Jack were, were, were banting her about. But first, I want to say, non sequitur wise, all Phil needs in addition to those white gloves, uh, yeah, maybe a hat black and a face. cane and black face. Yeah, now <laughs> Mr. Joel, imitator. But nevertheless, uh, the other stuff I, I, I had to bring up was uh, I still, and having, uh, first of all, having looked at the jacket now whereas yet last night I, I just was made aware of it on your show alex mm -hmm. but yes but over the course of today having uh, listened and watched an article on youtube concerning this issue and seen the jacket i still am not convinced that melania herself isn't sabotaging her husband and the administration at large but also that uh, it, the remark you just made earlier, Alex, concerning her handlers, uh, who's who, who who may or may not be telling her you shouldn't wear this. Well, maybe the handlers are, themselves aren't as intelligent as uh, we want to believe they are, because you know if these handlers are the same handlers that are uh, working with Donald Trump, I mean, look at all the gaffes and and goofs yeah. he's made through, throughout the course of his administrative Ray, uh, career. Ray Renati. Yeah, I I I, uh, I think there's something to that, Brian. Possibly, and also I want to say that the person who said you could never be too thin or too rich was a woman named Wallace Simpson. Okay, and she was from Summit, Pennsylvania. And she was. And that, she and, was. And that statement has been attributed to Jackie O because she epitomized being thin and rich. But, but she didn't say it. But she was also the wife of the uh, the king who stepped down to marry her. Yes, Duchess of Windsor. She was the Duchess of Windsor, yeah. And it wasn't Jackie O who said it. So I'm just tired of all this misinformation. I mean, why do we have to put up with this shit constantly? I mean, we get it from Trump. We get it from Phil, our own personal Trump. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's like, it's, like, I, it's going to give me a fucking heart attack. Sheriffin. <clears throat> Only if you love it. Well, I, I'll, 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 I'll take the strain for you because I got when I got my work back and everything, my cholesterol is perfect, and uh, my I have no blood in my urine, and the only thing, my PSA numbers were up. But that's it. That's it. I'm All in right. great shape, so let me get nervous. Seraphin. I can take it. Yes, Seraphin. You're getting paid the big bucks. Hey, Seraphin. I, I want to stay on top of what you hear. What you just mentioned, Alex. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Talk, talk into your talk into your into your phone. I can't hear you. Sure. Yeah. I was going to send you a. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Fine. Okay, I'm using a Bluetooth set here, so I'm just I'm back. How about this? That's fine. Okay, now I can hear you as well. Hey, just staying on the topic of medicine, I've been hearing you talking about your uh, uh, neuropathy in your legs, and especially down your feet. Well, not my, down my legs, just in my feet. Yeah, I was going to send you a, a bottle of, of something my doctors had me on for I don't know how many years because of my diabetes. It's called alpha lipoic acid. It's a supplement, and it took my uh, neuropathy completely away. Really? If I miss it for a week, it comes back, but you know, it doesn't have all the side effects of Lyrica. What is it? Is it like a? Uh, it's like a. Uh, it's over the counter, right? It's a drug. It's a, a. What do you call it? A, yeah, it's a, it's a supplement. What's it called again? Alpha lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic. That's P L I P O I C, right? I C. Uh -huh. Acid. Acid. Okay, let me look it up. All right. Yeah, it's it's done really good yeah. for me. The only yeah. yeah, the only complication I've ever had from it is if you take too much, you constipate you. But otherwise, well, it's worked uh, really well. You know. Talk show host goes on acid. <laughs> <laughs> I also. Uh, well, well, I snuck yeah. in here. I also wanted to comment on something that, that Phil and, and uh, Jack were, were both exchanging about uh, black voters. Being a Latino myself, um, it's very interesting what's going on here with the Trump administration uh, with regards to uh, any possibility of getting any Latino votes whatsoever. It's funny that, at least as a Mexican-American, I see the Mexican community uh, here in California uh, you know, they're kind of taking a back seat to uh, a lot of stuff. They, they just shake their heads about what's going on. And, and I can see it when I watch the Spanish news on, on uh, you know, Univision or, or Telemundo. Mm -hmm. um, but so, you know, it's a typical Mexican reaction that hey, you're waiting to see what this troubled child is going to do because there's probably something mentally wrong with him. You pity him more than, than you listen to him. But because there's Guatemalans and, and Nicaraguans and Hondurans and a lot of people from Central and South America who are really 
kicking it in the pants right now with regard to undocumented immigration. Uh, they also laugh quite a bit about that because they know what's drawing them here. And the funny thing, I can't find anything on the, on the uh, English press, you know, in terms of here in the U.S., nor in the Mexican press or in the Latin American press, that tells me how much some of these companies that, that have drawn these undocumented um, workers uh, are, are getting fined. For instance, they just captured 146 illegal immigrants in Ohio. They don't, nobody ever mentions how much the government is fining the workplace, you know, for, yeah. for having brought these people in. And I bet it's a pittance because, yeah, they, we're covered by laws of immigration, but they're so well, unbalanced uh, that the great big sucking sound coming from the so, U.S. for both drugs yeah. and undocumented workers is it's extremely Sa loud, and, and there's no justice. It's just the law. Seraphin, let me ask you this, uh, since you're a Latina. Uh, what is, with all the trouble getting into this country and, and the knowledge of what's going on trying to get into this country, why are they still trying? What is the, what is the lure? Well, I, I think Jack has his hands up because he'll probably be able to tell you too, being that he's in Texas. Yeah. It's the jobs. They, they don't go away. They continuously, uh, you know, the companies will send coyotes down into Latin America, uh, at least to the border, because everybody's coming to the border who's coming from South America and Central America on the death train. Yes. And they'll round them up there and take them to wherever they want to in the U.S. because they have the means to do it. By the way, there's a very good documentary out there if nobody's ever seen it, about the death train. Uh, it, it's it, it, the amount of people that start off in South America, in Guatemala and Honduras, places like that, and the amount that eventually get here is far less. Okay. Yes. Uh, 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 what's, uh, his name? Uh, <laughs> what's his name? Our host from this other show that uh, yeah. Yeah. the yeah, the intro the section. Uh, you know what uh, Sarah just said is so very very true. Uh, my wife worked for a company uh, oh about twenty years ago that had a huge, huge Latin uh, uh, population in the plant. And uh, they found out that one of the managers of the cut was going down to the border on a regular basis, like every few weeks, and recruited as they came across. Yeah, you... you We've got some kind of problem with your signal. I, I don't know what it is. You keep fading in and out. Now, now we can't even hear you, Jack. I hear me my headsets. Yeah, but we can't hear you. Yeah, you're low. Yeah, there's something too low. The the other night when this happened, you there was something you had your hand on or something or something that was. Oh. I think bring my level up anymore Jack. Get no uh, it no. sounds like you're crossing over to the other side <laughs> I hope so I'm so tired of this life <laughs> <laughs> hey Alex uh, just, yes Alex Which, just, I, this is Seraphine again just to comment on, on what Jack just said about you know the uh, the whole situation with, with workers it's been, the jobs are really big in Texas so that still draws a lot of people to work but the biggest irony I see is this has been going on for a long time and, and the most ironic situation was when Cesar Chavez had the boycott going for the UFW, and the Teamsters went down to the border and got a bunch of illegal aliens to come and, and help uh, break the strike. So that's how old it is, and that's how stupid it is, and that's how our laws don't really cover, you know, the out-of-control of capitalism that mm. we have in this country. you got H-1B visas, you've got undocumented immigrants. I kick it in the pants every time they get an H-1B visa. My, you know, they're paid 30% less than I am. And technology, it's just ridiculous. Phil's got his hand up. That's the only thing Trump has... Hey, Phil, that's the only thing Trump has done right. Control the H-1B visa. Can I ask you a question? Sure. No. What do you think of E-Verify? Well, Trump, I'll, Trump I'll tell you what. E verify I don't mind E-Verify. Um, you know, I think anybody who's, who uh, gets asylum in this country and is documented and <sighs> is able-bodied to work and seeks work should get it. And if they have the proper documentation, E-Verify and I-9s are perfectly fine. But well, I'll yeah, tell you what, Phil, I it is ridiculous It is ridiculous that a citizen like me, born and raised in Mountain View, California, okay, has to deal with the I-9 and get it done within three days of hiring on. I mean, it's Everybody, ridiculous what the government is asking. I'm an employer. Everybody fills out an I-9 that's uh, going for a W-2. Yeah, but, but, but three days, Phil. It doesn't, three days, Phil. It doesn't, take, it doesn't take that long. They don't ask you that long to go get a, a driver's license. Okay, uh, it, it's I, like the most un inconvenient process so, there is. When I have them fill out an I-9, I only have to put it in their file. I don't have to do anything with it. 
Uh-huh. Well, you know what, Phil? I'll tell you what. Um, I admire you quite a bit on this show. I really like what you do. I, I know I, last summer when, when Trump was running and everything, uh, and, were asked, and Alex asked you about your loyalties and stuff, uh, you, you were a little mixed. But you know what? You are really loyal. You're, you're uh, you know, from, from a different model, a model that I saw in my father. And I respect that, and I thank you for your contribution to the show. Okay, I've been wanting to say that for a long time. Thanks. By the way, but, good, 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 look, good looking hat, Ray. Thank you. Yeah, it's from France. Congress would not put E Verify into this last bill. What is E Verify? Uh, Will you explain E-verify, that to me? Well, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, when you, if you were an employer, yeah. you would be required if they you were using E Verify to put the person's information. Uh, in this uh, in this system, and they would tell you whether or not they were legitimate, uh, ready, uh, good to be hired. Yeah, we so, couldn't hire until we got cleared from E Verify. Right, but uh, yeah, so he wants to make it mandatory, and and the Congress doesn't. I thought and, it was mandatory. Okay. Uh, well, our uh, company ja- made it mandatory. Jack our Bishop company. has his hand up. Yes, Jack. We can't hear you, Jack. There, there. Okay. E-Verify has been the rule of law for over 20 years. It's not Nothing. used. Well, hey, you're, these companies are supposed to be fined, as someone said, if they don't use it. How come we don't get on the asses of the people that are hiring these folks? I Why? Don't. Because they're guys like you, Phil, who stand behind Trump and who rubber stamp his policies. Trump Evil. wants wants E Verify made the law of the land. It is the law of the land. No, it, it's not. So shall it be. E-verify. Yes. Who's on? You don't have to use well, E-verify well, as, an, as an employer. I, now I'm a small employer, All less right. than fifty employees, and uh, I'm not required to use E Verify. Are you are you fined if you don't? No. Then that's the problem. See, we were we, we were not allowed to hire until that E Verify was cleared. How many employees? Yeah. Uh, 20,000. All right. Okay. Uh, Patrick has his hand up. Um, I just want to say, with, with regard to what Jack just said, if guys like Bill that are behind Trump, actually, it goes way before that with employers who are ignoring it. I think I, I, it has nothing to do with Trump per se. They've been doing that shit. It's been the law for 20 years. Companies have been skirting that law for 20 years because they can. And it's the same with anything else that's illegal. If people can find the loophole, they will. And these companies should be uh, slapped down, and they should be fined. I mean, if you're hiring illegal, uh, you should be fined. I mean, it's, great, it's, great. it's that period. And it has nothing to do with Trump or Bush or... Obama, it, the company themselves, and it, and it had nothing to do with the backers or the president. It has to do with the idiots that run the country, companies, and they're, they're, I guess you could say their immoral uh, viewpoint at a lot. Alex, this yes. is Seraphin. Yes, hey, Seraphin. Patrick, amen. Um, you know, I understand what Phil's saying, and, and, you know, there's a sentiment that Trump has that I can't fault him for, which is is it's more of a show. I don't know if he really believes it. I don't think he does, but he, he values the American worker. And that goes for anybody who's a native American, you know, who's natively born in America or has been immigrated, um, you know, legally to, to the U S and he wants to save American jobs. So I understand where e verifiles save American jobs from undocumented workers. But I would also love to remind Phil that, Hey, if, if uh, you know Donald Trump gets his way in the E-Verify, I would also like to see him create something that says whenever the U.S. allows visas to be used to bring in workers, that there is ironclad proof that they're not coming in to take American jobs at lower wages because that's the loophole in H-1B visas, and nobody calls them on it. Trump well, is the only one who's done well, that. Well, here's, so my, here's my question. Let me, let me, let me jump in here uh, since I am the host of the show. Uh, my, my question that, is, why is it that we're making the illegal immigrants the bad guys when in fact all they're trying to do is survive when the real bad guys are the people that hire them if there aren't jobs in this country for them they wouldn't be streaming over the border 
And what we do is we put fines on these people, but they're so small that they're willing to take the risk. We've got to really thump them hard. You want to make Americans hire Americans? Then make it so that it isn't financially feasible for them to hire other, illegal other aliens. The undocumented workers that are coming over, are any of them getting welfare and other benefits with, uh, with either with working in an undocumented status or not? If they're working, if, if they're working and they're paying, ta if they're working and paying taxes, they're probably able to get certain services. Yes, no, but they're and they go back to and they go back to their country of origin when they need medical attention because they all come from countries with nationalized medicine, Phil. So you know, I heard SG say last night that they're, they're learning um, hygiene for the first time in these detention centers. That's a bunch of crap. How they're come? in better health than we are because they have nationalized medicine and they get. Well, okay, healthcare. Ray's got his hand up. Ray's got his hand up. Ray's got his hand up. I just want to say I agree with Alex 100%. I think that these people who come in here have courage, and I hand it to them. And if they can yeah. get a job here, right on. You know what? It's like just because your ass was born in the United States of America, why why do you get privilege? Wait a minute. Why, why, they, live, they live in some shithole country, right? That's what the Constitution says. Right. Yeah, right. I disagree with Wait you. Wait a second. Before 1950, we let everybody in. We let everybody yeah. in, no, no, no questions no. asked, unless they were sick no, or Ray, Jewish. Ray, Ray, that's not true. We did not let everybody <laughs> we in. We let a lot of people. My, my ancestor just came in on a boat. They didn't have any legal papers. Hey, hey, listen, yes. You know, but that was not 19, you know. That was like 19... Uh, Oh, five or something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but even then we didn't let everybody. Well, no, we, yeah, I, I, let, me, let me, let me, let me, let me explain something. There were several ways to get into this country at that time. One was to come in through the West Coast, which was much easier than coming through the East Coast. Like my grandfather came here first at, with one of his sons, uh, Bolo, uh, and, and, and set up shop and their home in San Francisco. Meanwhile, my father and his mother traveled, and they had to go, and because I've seen the, 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 the papers for it, they, she, they had to go to Ellis Island, where yeah. they were ported through right. Ellis Island, and then if they could prove that they had somebody to go stay with or whatever, they could then leave Ellis Island. The average stay at Ellis Island was a couple of days, unless you were ill, in which case you could be there for months until you were well or better, or you might be turned around and sent back. However... If you had money and you were white, you could bypass Ellis Island and went straight to Manhattan. Okay? So there were only only the, the poor and the and the foreigners uh, the uh, were were and Jews were had to go through Ellis Island. Okay. Also we've got to remember we had an Asian exclusion act. Yeah. At that time. As I say, we can barely hear you. Uh, f uh, uh, All right. I heard you. All right, I guess I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we can hear you, but it's it's it, why you're not getting any volume out of there. You know, you might hang up and just call right back on Skype, and maybe it's the Skype line. All right, I'll try that. Yeah, try it. Hey, okay. Alex. Yes. Jack, Jack brought up a really good point there yeah. um, with regards to, like, the Asian Exclusion Act and other such things. And your points were very valid in terms of how we've done selective immigration over the years. Yeah. But I'll tell you, I don't think anybody's considered the damage to Latin America that have happened over the years. All those Cubans in South in South Florida that the Republicans managed to draft because of their anti-Cuban uh, communism and anti-Castro stance. Uh, Phil, I'm talking to you about this. You know, they definitely padded their roles for voters uh, by brainwashing all those, uh, you know, South Florida Cubans. And those people are the pariahs of Latin America. They turned their backs on their own country and made life miserable for millions of Cubans because of their selfishness. They were bitter from having all their wealth taken away when Bautista bit the dirt. It continues today. All You guys don't think about it, but all the Salvadorans, all the Nicaraguans, all the, mm -hmm. anybody who's coming up from South America or Central America through Mexico is doing their share of damage to Mexico. Right. I've had my family down there victimized in terms of gypsy cabs that run over people and crash and they have no insurance. They just flee. The Mexican government and Mexico's economy is taking a hit, basically sheltering all these undocumented workers trying to get into the U.S. while they're in Mexico. And, yeah. and uh, you know, the U.S. doesn't think of that. When Trump Seraphin, says Mexico does nothing for us, it's a bunch of crap. Seraphin, I think the reason the Cuban vote was so pro-Republican was because uh, they uh, they were majority Catholic. And 
the uh, and it was an, an abortion abortion issue, and uh, they they believed in uh, in family. Uh, and I, I was a, you know, I, Bill, I had I had Cuban babysitters where I grew up in Mountain View. They only came here to get welfare and social security and have the easy life they had with Bautista maybe, because they lost all their wealth. Maybe so don't tell me about what, what I know personally. Oh, the Cubans are a bunch of selfish fuck well, down in uh, South Florida. Florida. Everybody I else hates South Florida. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. We've got, we got, we got Jack here, and I, Jack is in Texas. I think he knows a little bit about this. I was in Florida and in, in Miami, and yeah, I yeah. knew many Cubans uh, okay, that came yeah. over and, uh, after Batista and before Batista. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you, they were the hardest working uh, families that you you could imagine. And so and that's what you got out of your. That's what you got. That's what you got. Welfare. That's what you got they out of your vacation. To their people, okay. right, Bill? And they were a credit to their people, right? That's what you guys always say. Look, yeah. the Cuban <laughs> situation is unique. It is unique in that the people that came from Cuba came after the revolution. They were the landed aristocracy who was getting their ass booted anyway. They didn't they weren't the poor and hungry masses. You know, we had this policy which which we never talk about about the one dry foot rule. If you're from Cuba and you get to a point where you got one dry foot on U.S. soil, we let you in. That's no true. other group, no other group has that because they you were get, truly, they were truly running from oppression. No, they the weren't running was, away from oppression. Uh, they were the oppressors, Phil. They, they were they, the oppre in Cuba in to the Cuban people. They were the oppressors. Well, I don't know about that. Well, yes, of course you don't know Castro about that. Kicked them out. Cat, the Castro kicked, kicked them out. out. He wanted to kill them. These well, people, why do you these think, people why were do you being think, jailed. Why do you think the Cuban people, as you call them, why do you think they back Castro? Because he offered them a better deal than Batista. No, because he was going to kill them. Oh, uh, hell no. You know, right, and, and Phil, then, Phil, and, Phil, and you Phil, that, Phil, you Phil, Phil, don't. Talk about the Cubans that came over, that was Jimmy Carter allowing Fidel Castro to empty his jails and send his best. No, to, that, no, you know, nobody, that nobody, nobody, nobody allowed him to do it. He that, he unloaded people from his jails. Very smart move. Put them on boats and the Marielle boat lift. In case you remember the name or don't remember the name, I remember it. And and, and, and uh, it was a very smart uh, idea on the part of uh, of, uh, of Castro. We had a moron you know? that was the president named Jimmy Carter. No, we had a president named Ronald Reagan at that time, brother. No, no, no. No, no. Right. no he's absolutely correct. Check he's absolutely correct. It was it was Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Was Carter. No, it wasn't no, card. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Wait, hold on a second. Policy at work. Tom, who was it? Shit to clean wait, up hold right hold on a second. Tom? It was Carter. It was Carter. It, okay. it, it was Carter. You did guys are so self righteous. Thank you. Did, did it not continue under Reagan for no, much longer? Reagan was. Bo no. Uh, it, it, the Muriel boat lift happened under Carter. Okay. But well, what about but, the. You know, hey, I just wanted to let Phil know that, that I, I really like. Um, you know his his passion over you know how he's talking about these these Cuban refugees um, because he's just, he's basically talking about their best in terms of yeah they were running away from from a bad deal of communism and the possibility they were going to get killed like the plantation uh, um, owners in the South would have been killed if Fidel Castro would have come along at that time for the same crimes but I'll also say Phil why can't you apply those feelings to the Salvadorans and Nicaraguans and Hondurans that are coming up they're trying to escape revolution civil war that's threatening communism on them and Sarah and i'm happy if they escape but they should escape to mexico which is the next country over not the united states they're coming here for welfare all right phil how come guys like you who are business people just like the cubans in building plants no, the cubans would die before they took welfare. how come you're not putting your money into that country it's a it's a opportunity that business people like you should be stepping up to i am i employ many documented it, it, workers. i'm talking about in in mexico if you believe so much in what can be done you say, small, you say you are you say you are a business builder <laughs> I, I am a small <laughs> hold on a second hold on a second everybody hold on a second ray renati just put the best description of our discussion on the on the uh, uh, chat room here for the show and it simply reads blah blah 
blah. <laughs> Hey, Alex, uh, this is Sarah Fagan. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Yes, Sarah Fagan. Between all of us yelling, including Jack and stuff like that about the Cubans and all this yeah. stuff, you know, it, it, it really uh, comes down to being, you know, as, as a Latin American, uh, you know, Mexican American here in California, in my, ho- in my home, yeah. I've, I've never felt so attacked as a Latino in my life. And what's going to happen is there's going to be a real backlash with Latinos come the next the uh, midterm election midterm elections and come the next election with regards to Trump if he even makes it that far it's we're very quiet but when we rise up it's it's cease of weather time and and that's pretty severe so, so the, the Democrats are, are going to re- yeah the Democrats aren't going to recruit anybody that hasn't been recruited already out of Latin America and you know the the, the whole thing is it's also a matter of the world economics mm-hmm. America loves cheap labor and it fosters it anywhere in the world and in itself so even Mexico can't get cheap enough labor. They go. They go to the U.S. because because uh, you know basically they don't want they want they don't want peso. They want dollar. Tom, did you put your hand up? I scratched my head. Oh, I, okay. <laughs> I, 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 I'm scratching my surfing, head. Surfing. I don't agree. I think that the Latin vote is going to go widely for Trump. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Uh, we. we, we, we those, yeah, those yeah. they're saying, going to be okay. very similar to the early Cuban okay. voters. Uh, 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 the Jewish vote in Germany uh, gone for Hitler. Would the Jewish vote in Germany have gone for Hitler? The Jews didn't get a vote for Hitler. If they could have voted, would they have gone for Hitler? Uh, uh, well, I, I think I can solve that one. If Phil was over, so, there, yeah. if, if if Phil was over there, he would have voted for Hitler. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, uh, Patrick. <laughs> I'm off my train of thought. As soon as Jack cut that, and Phil answered, I. I forgot what I was going to say. That was good. The Trump youth. Yes, yes, Brian. I was just thinking, well, I've been thinking this for a number of months now. Uh, the only thing I'm, I'm, I've been starting to think as, as to what made Hitler an evil or bad guy was the fact that he persecuted and executed the wrong groups of people. If he'd have persecuted and executed yuppies... Uh, snake oil salesman, uh, Donald Trump like people, I'd suck his cock. I'd dig him up. Out the room and I'd suck his cock. Hey, Brian, that's the reason why I called you my child separated from me at birth. Yeah. Statements like that. <laughs> no, no, I think it was, I think I think I think Hitler I, I think I, 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 I think Hitler was cranky because he only had one testicle. I think that was the oh, reason I would why. Too. Yeah. I yeah. one. Hey, Alex. Yes. You know, there's one thing that I think Jack and I can agree on, yeah. which is there is something that plagues both our people uh, in a real bad way, and, and this is probably where, where uh, Phil is overestimating. Religion plays a big part. Yes. Pro-life, you know, all that stuff. Regardless, regardless of whether you're Catholic or whether you're, you're Protestant, doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, I saw a lot of people when, when uh, gay marriage laws and stuff were being uh, voted on, Standing on corners, they were religious groups from Latino churches it, with signs of both in English and Spanish, you know, basically supporting the vote against gay marriage. And it was re- totally religious. But I'll tell you, the, the majority of, of, of Latinos are Catholic. They are recent, uh, you know, underdogs in the battle against the Catholic Church when it came down to pedophilia mm-hmm. and all other crimes they've done in underdeveloped countries. So they're not as Catholic as they used to be. Their eyes are very wide open, Phil. I wouldn't count on any of them voting for Trump. Let's hope that's the case let's hope they turn to atheism too because that's really that's the big pass here that's why all the religious right is so willing to forgive anything that donald trump says or does is because they want these christian values that they believe most of them being hypocrites well, all yeah. of them being hypocrites because everything yeah. donald trump stands for is anti everything that they stand for and rob that's the reason but that's the reason I hope they're right about a rapture, because I want them sons of bitches off my planet. <laughs> you know, and I just want to clarify one thing about the uh, the Cubans that came uh, uh, pre and post Batista, uh, 59 and, and such. These people would sooner cut their hands off than take welfare. They uh, Bank presidents would scrub toilets before they would take welfare. It, it was, and you, you could go to their homes and they were spotless. And they, these are the kind of people that came over 
these people were our friends, and uh, Castro was not. Yeah, okay, and yet many of them were murderers in their country. Many of them were 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 uh, going Castro along with were going along with a with a, a, a horrible dictatorship under under Batista. They were kissing Batista's ass. They were in. They were literally legitimizing the kind of genocide that went on in that country. And so, when they came to this country, the fact that they wouldn't take welfare doesn't make them a better fucking person. You know, uh, un un wait, under, let, under wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, Roy, Jack had something to say. And Phil, look, Castro initially turned to us in his revolution. Yes. And we gave him fuck you. So he turned to another side to help. And by the way, when he came to the United Nations, where did he have to stay? Harlem. In yeah. Harlem. Yes, Tom, and then uh, then uh, 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 Patrick. Yes, Tom. And let us not forget, Castor could have been a pitcher for the Dodgers. Yeah. Yes, you're right. <laughs> right. You're right. How much more American than that? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And and Patrick. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that I think we're all forgetting is if Castro had actually approached Michael Corleone uh, back when Michael was actually in Cuba, mm -hmm. we, we could have avoided all of the problem because they could have put together a nice alliance and they could have had the mafia and the communists running things together. Yeah. And life would be great. Uh, Ray. Hey, uh, Patrick. Michael, Michael. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait. Michael Corleone is a fictional character, Patrick. You know that, right? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't want to fuck your, I, I'm sorry to rain on your parade, but, you know. But you said you could Ray, never be Ray. too thin or too rich. Uh, Ray, a lot of this. Is Sarah, this is Seraphin again. Yes, yeah, Seraphin. I, I just wanted to thank Patrick for, for uh, bringing up something that I, I forgot about earlier, and that was, you know, what could have been done to avoid uh, Castro coming into power and Cuba changing as radically as it did. And basically, it's the chickens coming home to roost. That is the bottom line in Latin America. All the disruption of governments in Latin America that the CIA and the U.S. have perpetuated over the years to get whatever capitalistic, you know, uphand they wanted. It's coming home to roost. These people are running. Well, look at what look, look, look behind look, by U.S. Uh, disruption. Look at what Venezuela really? doing for you, Seraphin. Well, uh, why don't you want to? Venezuela's you... well, the same story. No, uh, it's uh, a what, what, what country? And, and uh, it's it's okay. probably going to do just great. Yeah. When we when we overthrew uh, what's what was his name? I'm trying to remember the country now. Uh, in Chile. Allende? In, Chile, Allende in Chile, who was basically his only problem was he was a communist, but he was a democratic communist and the united states couldn't stand the idea of seeing democratic communism working anywhere because that was an anathema to our way of life right and so they had and a, a yen, got they a yen they killed and who did they replace him with pinochet one of the worst and dictators Noriega that, never saw the light of day because of all the cia secrets he knew that disrupted panama and put him in power yeah so, you know, we, we, we've made a mess down there for, you know, a long, like long time. A we've we've been attacking Rob. those countries since World War, after World War II. Yes, Rob, Rob? Talk about the Middle East, the same thing. We've made a mess of all of this. But yeah. the weapons dealers and the drug dealers are making out like bandits. And they're all <laughs> You're right. With governments in, we go in and we, 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 put, we put our own, we, we back bad guys because we we because we want our own way in certain areas and so we've done it in in latin america we've done it in the middle east remember oliver north and all that yeah how about donald trump oh, yeah. he doesn't want to be there how come you don't back <laughs> now i do i'm a trumpster uh, uh, yeah i'm all for trump <laughs> yay 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 fucking trump hey listen that's our I theme that's our theme that is playing. Uh, we must thank our panel tonight. First of all, the lovely and attractive Phil Meyer, who has convinced me that Trump is wonderful. Um, Rob, Rob Alfano, uh, who, who's a fucking left winger. Uh, uh, of course, there's there's Kevin. Well, who can who who can fight with Santa Claus? Okay, you know, uh, even though I ate, ate reindeer meat in in Norway. Uh, Seraphin, thank you for calling. Please call again. You were terrific. Yes. I've been listening to you for 30 years. I don't think I've forgotten a show since you started my life mentoring. Okay, well, come, will you call us more, please? 
Yes. Please. If you don't hang up on me for making a request like you did the first time. No. Oh. I, uh, <laughs> that was a camel. <laughs> that was a camel, yeah. He, and I said, I got to listen to this guy. There's something about him. Yeah. You know why he couldn't take requests? Because Phil was the producer. Yeah. Nate Lawley for a yeah. short time. But, uh, hey, 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 we're running out of time here, uh, Phil. Right, okay. Uh, Tom Yamaguchi, thank you for joining us. Patrick Blazik, hey, of hey, course, Sarah, Brian. Hey. Getting hung up on out by Alex Bennett is a badge of honor. Yes, and of course, Ray Renati, we always enjoy having you here. Would all you guys please give a big wave goodbye to that fine audience out there, all right? There they are. Oh, they're so cute, aren't they? Okay, that's our citizen panel for tonight, and that's our program for tonight. Next is Jack Bishop. Hopefully, he'll have his Skype working just really fine, and uh, that will be followed uh, at uh, 1 o'clock in the morning by Connections. We'll be back here right after Damian Chaplin and the Exchange on Tuesday night at 10 o'clock, same time, same station in life, and in the meantime, if you see her, please. Tell her I love her, okay? Bye.